No one has more state pride than New Mexicans. The vibrant culture, bold flavors, unique history, and dramatic landscapes under our Zia sun are like no other. And the people of New Mexico are a rare breed. As diverse as we are, together we breathe life and soul into this high desert land, a land that promises adventure. I'm Michael Newman, and as your host, I'll be taking you with me as I seek out the best the land of enchantment has to offer. New Mexico, Mexico feels like home. Welcome to New Mexico True Television. I'm your host, Michael Newman. In this episode, we're exploring northeastern New Mexico. Victory Ranch is the largest alpaca ranch in the southwest, and it's right outside of Mora, New Mexico. It's a wonderful place for kids of all ages to come and visit with the animals and get a taste of life on a working ranch. Not to mention getting close and personal to an alpaca. Brian and Darcy are a husband and wife team, running the ranch and caring for this herd of over 300 alpacas, all of whom they know by name. And the animals aren't the only draw. The gorgeous setting of the ranch, the home of these alpacas, is a great place to walk around and take in the scenery. This is the Mora Valley. They call the Northeast, this is the bread box of New Mexico. And how long have you guys been here? My folks, it's been something like 25 years, but my mom has been coming to the Las Vegas area, so northeast New Mexico, since she was 15. And what was the initial draw for them? Just, just how beautiful my, it was? They were, are from the south side of Chicago, and my dad grew up wearing cow, a cowboy hat and cowboy boots. He always wanted to be a cowboy. They came here and uh, he, they fell in love with the area and the community and this ranch. They read that any idiot could raise alpacas, and so they're like, hey, that sounds perfect for us. They're really nice to the ground. They don't pull up the grass from the root, they just shorten it. You can see it's like a, a golf course. Talk to me about these specific type of alpacas. Two types of alpacas. There's a huacaya and a surrey. Mm -hmm. We only have huacaya alpacas. What's the interaction like with um, the alpaca? Is there, is everyone is kind of different? Generally, the alpaca is skittish. I think they're really intelligent animals. They watch you and they decide you develop a relationship. This is Romanoff. This is one of our oldest, our oldest guys. Hi, hey, buddy. <laughs> and why is his name Romanoff? Romanoff, because he's always roaming off the property. <laughs> What's your favorite thing about the alpaca? Or raising them and being on a farm? They're so peaceful. I mean, and it's very real. It's a very real lifestyle. It's about how much rain we're getting. It's about food and water. And it turns out, I, at first, I was in love with the animals and the ideas of being on the ranch. It turns out I love the fiber too. I became a knitter and felter and spinner. So it's almost like a way of life, you know, from, from raising them, you know, take care of them to using, you know, their, their fur and kind of having a reverence for the whole of the animal. Definitely. A bonus in visiting this ranch is that you can take some of the alpacas home with you. Their wool, that is. This is right off the alpaca. It doesn't hurt them when we shear them. It's just a, hair, a haircut. This is not wool. It's oh. actually a hollow hair. It's a fiber, so it's not a wool. And the characteristics are different to sheep's wool, and so people either love it or they hate it as far as spinning it. It's really my color. <laughs> Did you make this yourself? They buy that yarn I look like for Rick James. <laughs> I had just enough time to take in the visitor center before one of the feeding tours started. The 11 o'clock tour. With alpacas and llamas, guys, they don't have any upper teeth, but they can't really bite you. So I'm going to fill up your cups here with some of the grain. And what you can do is you'll pour it in your hand and you can kind of cup it so it doesn't spill all over the ground. And you'll see when we get up there, they have a split upper lip like a camel does. They're members of the camel family. These girls are usually out with the big herd where we just were with Darcy. So they feel a little separation anxiety. That's why they're kind of hanging out back here. But when they see the red bucket, they'll usually come running. Yeah. This is Honey. She's really sweet. This is Tiari. She's, she's one of our favorites. Or they're all our favorites, but Tiari's very vocal. <laughs> When alpacas attack. Oh, he's so friendly. Hey, come here, come here. So one of the best things about traveling on the road is you pick up a lot of friends.
When planning your trip to Victory Ranch, here's some things to keep in mind. The ranch is open daily from Memorial Day to Labor Day, then Friday through Sunday during the off season. Feeding tours start at 11 a.m., 1 p.m., and 3 p.m. And the ranch is great for kids, not for pets. And if you're an old car buff, stay tuned for what's coming up next. Sign up to receive monthly newsletters about events and happenings around the state at NewMexico.org. And now from the pages of New Mexico Magazine. Today we're taking on the town of Raton. Many of us know Raton for Raton Pass, which has been used for centuries to cut through the rugged Rocky Mountains. But this town experienced its boom when the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe Railroad and coal mining came to town. Past meets present in the old Wells Fargo Express building where local emerging artists display their work. Good morning, you Brenda? Yes, I am Brenda. Michael. Nice to meet you. Uh -huh. Thank you for Come having me. Come on in. Where are you headed next? I don't know. This, this is my first time in Raton, so I, I need to know where all the good spots are. Oh, there's some wonderful spots. Okay. Uh, on Main Street, which is 2nd Street, there's an old gas station called The Station. My dad owns that. You should stop by there. He's probably out there with all of his friends right now. And with that, I made a beeline for The Station. Clearly, The Station is the place to drop in and see what the locals are up to, not to mention taking a spontaneous car show. Uh-huh. Like old time. Oh, yeah. Hi guys. Hey Frank. How are you? So have you guys been doing this for a while? We have. Uh, we just paint the old thing up and put our old cars in here and just have cruise nights and uh, hang out for old guys. Yeah? Okay Michael. Oh wow. This place is so cool. Oh. This is truly the best place to celebrate the cars and culture of a bygone era. The past is gone, you know, it goes past and if you, if you just forget it, it's, it's this way they, they got a chance to see what it used to be when we all grew up here. And everybody you see in there drugged them up and down this main in these kind of cars, they really did. After leaving the station, I was ready to check out more of the local scene, so I headed to Solano's Boot and Western Wear, a multi-generational family operation that draws people from near and far. Hello, welcome. Hello. How are you today? I'm good. Good. How can we assist today? Well, I have to say, it's my first time here, but the scent of warm leather as uh. you walk in is very alluring. We have cowboy western wear for the young and old, the ladies and the gentlemen, so retro, old style, old west. Oh. So whatever you're looking for, we can hopefully fit your, your needs. Well, I don't have any retro western gear, but... Okay, <laughs> let's go on back and look. All right. All right. The Saratellis, I've heard of those ones. You might see me turn into a cowboy today, I don't know. You aren't right, you got a lot of brain in that head. <laughs> I'm smart. 23 and a half inches. <laughs> Make sure I'm putting it on right, I don't know if it's supposed to be like eye level. That seems to fit you pretty yeah, good. Do you, you like the way it looks? Let you gotta, you gotta like the way it looks out. too. Let me check myself out real quick. This is huge. <laughs> these are some tall top boots in various of colors, okay? Um, we custom make these boots. I mean, we custom design them. Let's go ahead and have you try this on. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, it's real sturdy. You don't, I don't feel like right. I'm going to fall in them. No, you, and you look good. Yeah, mm -hmm. not too shabby. I'd yeah, say so. I like it. So you be ready, because I'm going to come out fully robed. Okay. okay. And then the other boot. Okay. Ready or not, here I come. All right. Go big or go home. Right? That looks good. The shirt fits good. I, I think so. Uh -huh. I don't know what I'm and supposed to look like. Yeah. Everything seems really um, tight. Okay. <laughs> so I feel real snug right now. <laughs> your, your boots feel okay? Boots, boots feel good. Okay. I can send you on back to my father and he can show you what he does back there. Yeah, that'd be great. Does that sound mm -hmm. good? Okay, yeah. let's go this way then. 
Andy is a master of his craft. Since 1956, he has been repairing old cowboy boots and bringing them back to life, elevating the notion of repair to an art form. The care and attention he puts into his work have helped Andy and his wife grow the business to what it is today. Andy Solano's craft has stood the test of time in Raton, and so have a few other things here in town. Make sure and stop at the Raton Museum and top off your visit with a show at the historic and majestic Schuler Theater. Beyond all the wonderful things to experience in town, when you ask the locals what they love about Raton, they will tell you it's the gateway to some of the most incredible wilderness and wildlife in the state. Case in point, our next stop for Mayho Park Ranch. But first, here are some tips for your visit to Raton. Bring your camera for some great photo ops at the station. For lunch, stop at La Cocina, a designated New Mexico true culinary treasure. And be sure to ask a local for directions to the top of Goat Hill. To read the article on Raton in New Mexico Magazine, go to newmexico.org. Just outside of Raton is nearly 600,000 acres of wildlife paradise, otherwise known as Vermejo Park Ranch. The large and expansive land comprise an exclusive property that is a mecca for outdoor enthusiasts. For guests of the lodge, the activities are endless, from hunting, fishing, and horseback riding, to adventures akin to a Rocky Mountain safari, there is something for everyone at Bermejo. And you will even have your own personal guide to take you through your custom tailored experience. On my visit, Nicole Reed will be guiding me through this vast expanse of land for a day of wildlife exploration and fishing. How big is the property? The Bovian Miranda land grant was just over a million acres. A million acres? A million. And now, Vermejo Park Ranch is right at um, 586,000 contiguous uh, acres. One of the things I think is more special about our property, we do have a lot to choose from, but in a certain sense, a big part of who we are is just coming here to unplug and really have a lot not going on. Yes, you can hike, yes, you can horseback ride, but if you don't want to do anything, that's just as great. You can just be. Yeah, mm -hmm. just be. Wow. Here's a fresh cow. Free range. Free range. And where else can you just come down the street and just so happen to come across a herd of bison? Bison, bison correct. Right? Not I, buffalo. I don't know if it's buffalo or bison, right? It's bison. Buffalo are native to Africa and Asia. Oh, learned something new today, right? Yeah. What are these? These are some pronghorn right in front of us. Yeah. Pronghorn is the appropriate mm -hmm. uh, term for them. Antelope are also an African species. Are they um, a prairie, a prairie animal? They are, mm -hmm. specifically. Their greatest strength would be their eyesight. They can see for very long distances, up to a mile away. The ranch also offers photography tours. Shut your door real quietly when you get out, so you don't scare them. Was male or female, you think? They look like female. They're being very patient. They like to bed down in the middle of the day. Believe me, there is no shortage of options when you're dealing with this much acreage of wilderness. It truly is an opportunity of a lifetime. But now that I've had my fill of four-footed mammals, I'm opting for some time out on the water to fish. I've been coming up here since 1986. Wow. And my two boys, uh, this is where they learned how to fly fish. Have you cast? I have, before? I have cast before. I have fly fish, but not with this long of a rod. And is there, is there a difference of how you, the technique you do it? It's a little easier oh, with, okay. it, with a longer rod. Mm -hmm. um, start a cast with mm -hmm. as little slack in your line as possible. So okay. you'd want to start. Mm -hmm. See how straight my line is? Yeah. It's got to be a great job to be able to come out here and help people catch fish in this beautiful landscape. It is. It's, it is my passion. And what's your favorite thing about on the Vermejo? 
getting in touch with the land a little bit. Yeah. And that, I think that's an important door to open for people. Yeah. And I think it's, it's especially so in a place like this that's so vast and then, you know, this all this private land and you can just come and roam. 600,000 acres of a backyard. Yeah, yeah, freedom. For, <laughs> yes, freedom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is Vermejo. A place to immerse yourself in the great outdoors by day, Vermejo provides a culinary adventure in the evening. Offerings like bison and fresh fish grace the menu, and much of their fare is produced right on the property. Here's a toast to the day, the good fishing we had, the good camaraderie, and the good Lord for making it all happen. Cheers. 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 While the fishermen toast to their day, I reflect back on my own. You're at the, the playing field, you're at the same level of the animals, you're taking in bison and elk and deer and when you're in it and you're, you're you're literally standing on the soil and five feet in front of you is like this 800 pound bison it's, I mean, it's there's nothing like it i'm really blown away and i think other people should definitely experience romeo park ranch for themselves when planning your trip to romeo park ranch here are a few helpful hints save up for this once in a lifetime opportunity disconnect to reconnect Cell phone service may be limited or unavailable. Also, there's plenty to do, even if you don't hunt or fish. And stay tuned, we have gunslingers and ghosts on the way. Find steals and deals for your next New Mexico vacation at NewMexico.org. When you're in northeastern New Mexico and you feel like you're in the middle of nowhere, Colfax Tavern may be just around the bend. So Roger, how long has this place been open and around? The bar's been here since 1929. It was built because of Dawson, old coal mining town up the river about six miles. It is in the middle of nowhere. It's a neighborhood tavern in a big damn neighborhood. <laughs> have you seen a change? Like who is your clientele now from the miners till now? I'll have bikers, cowboys, locals, tourists, all in here at the same time. Wow. One time I had a bunch of bikers sitting in the corner over there and I had these two kind of sorority type girls from Minnesota and they literally <laughs> stuck their head in and they said, we're not from around here, which was obvious. And one of the bikers said, ain't nobody from around here except Roger. <laughs> so that's kind of how it is. And now from our Cabinet Secretary of Tourism, Monique Jacobson. Here is another New Mexico true treasure. We have many high-end hot springs and spas here in New Mexico, but sometimes my family and I like something more rustic. And at those times, we head to the Montezuma Hot Springs outside of Las Vegas. Part of the beauty here is that the springs are so close you can drive up, hop out of your car, and into the hot water. The other part of the beauty here is, well, the beauty. The setting is gorgeous, with the surrounding landscape and a view of the historic Montezuma Castle. The castle is on the campus of the United World College, and it's not open to visitors. But the college does offer the unique Dwan Light Sanctuary, for quiet reflection amid the many rainbows cast by sunlight through prisms. The hot springs are good for a soak, the sanctuary is good for the soul. So the only thing missing is something good for your stomach. And you'll fill that void by picking up some donuts at Charlie's Spick and Span Cafe in Las Vegas. Spending a full day with a family trip to Montezuma Hot Springs is one of the many New Mexico true treasures. You can get information and ideas for great day trips all around the state at newmexico.org. Cimarron in Spanish means wild and unruly. And the St. James Hotel with its infamous Wild West legends lives up to the town's name. This is a beautiful quaint hotel, but back in the day, it used to be an old Wild West saloon and inn that used to house people on the Santa Fe Trail. People like Jesse James, Buffalo Bill, as well as many other desperados and outlaws. And 26 people have been known to be killed by a gunfight in this place. So this is the main dining room, and you can still look up and see 22 different bullet holes still in the ceiling. And that's not even the crazy part because when they were replacing the floorboards above, they found over 400 bullet casings. That means there was a lot of fighting going on in this place.
in this room is the high stakes poker room. Only the high rollers would come upstairs to play in this room. The darkest tale to come out of this room is that Thomas J. Wright won the whole St. James Hotel from Mr. Lampert in this room. But not very long after he won it, he found himself shot in the back and went back to his room in the hotel to die. That means there's a lot of ghosts that are hanging out in this premises. So we're gonna check in and see if there's any paranormal activity. Hello. Hi, checking in? Yes, ma'am. Michael Newman. Oh, you're staying in Mary Lambert. Mary Lambert. Yes, that's uh, the former owner's wife. Oh. You may uh, smell her perfume. And she's no longer alive? She is no longer alive, but I think she occupies that room sometimes. Oh, that's good to know. <laughs> oh, well, that's a little creepy. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good day. All right. Everything creaks. And it's a little weird that it's all pink. <laughs> so, I am extremely freaked out right now. But I left two lights on. So I have my nightlight action. So hopefully, all will go well and I'll get some kind of sleep tonight. Maybe it's time to start counting sheep. If you're heading to the St. James, here are a few things you need to know before you go. No Ouija boards allowed. No, really, no Ouija boards allowed. You can request to stay in a haunted room or not. And if you're too chicken to stay the night, at least grab a bite or drink at the bar and restaurant open seven days a week. Northeastern New Mexico has it all. Mountains, wildlife, and great people. So definitely get up here as soon as possible. And we'll see you next time on New Mexico True Television.